Deepan was a statistics on the ground. If you look at the literature, there's no such a thing. You cannot really define what's the statistics on the ground because the statement itself is very unclear. So I think this is actually first work, first paper doing that. So it's actually based on this. Uh, you need to this paper. This is uh, under review. Actually, it's uh, accepted in Mikai. The meta code is about 10 lines. So you don't actually need a meta. Line. So I have a bunch of paper grant. Uh, so this data come from the here, this uh, rest day functional magnetism. It's uh, our scanner in medicine. So we get this. And this is the data. Somehow after some lengthy processing, we get this kind of the, the dynamic changing brain network. And that, that looks, what you're seeing is the actual correlation values. Which is changing over time. Then the question I want to address is the following. Okay. This is a very simple question. I like a question, a problem that can be stated in one sentence. I, that's what I usually solve. So what is the common topology of brain network that does not change over time? Okay. This is not an easy, hard problem. Okay. And you can address this problem with the code I provided in the web page. <laughs> How? I'll explain it. I'm not going to give you the answer, the actual answer, but I'm going to give you the indirect answer. Then, well, student, you should be able to do. So this is the usual correlation brain network at the voxel level. This is a MATLAB visualization. All the visualization you see in my talks are MATLAB. So how many net cycles are there in this network? So this is about uh, 100,000 node network. So there will be about uh, 300,000 square divided by two cycle approximately. That's a lot of cycle. Eh? So how big the network data is? Now this is a network data coming from one millimeter resolution. Now, now if we, I use a three million resolution network. I get this about the data size is about five gigabytes RAM memory, millimeter resolution network. I get 90 billion connections and seven, seven hundred gigabytes RAM memory. Eh? You see the my dilemma. I cannot use a deep filtration. What the usually popular homology do? Well, it's usually n cube algorithm. I usually avoid doing anything with the n-cube algorithm. It's basically three-dimensional image. Three-dimensional image is n-cube computation, even doing the, the grid searching. That's, uh, and the Gaussian animation is n-cube. Matrix inversion is n-cube. Uh, the singular value decomposition is n-cube. All those problem are, PC is n-cube, that's why. PC. All those are unscalable. Yeah? You cannot do that. So then we're going to use a scalable homology, person homology. It's what we call the graph filtration. It loss an n log n time in almost all the operation. Yeah? And how fast is it? It's a, what we call 1.5 dimensional problem. n cube is a two dimensional problem. So it's below the uh, two dimension. This is a domain of a scale level computation. So almost all my research in the since student years, I only work on doing this and log n algorithm algorithm. If not, I try to fix the problem somehow and come up with algorithm. So now the concept was first. I mean, this is common knowledge now. But uh, the we our group actually presented for the first time, actually in Mikai in 2011. Now this is baseline. Everybody used to do it, does it? They don't even know if we are the one who actually came up with this. So this is paper that got the uh, terminology, graph filtration. 
and the paper actually used the Gorm Hausdorff distance. I was actually faculty at the Seoul National University for three years uh, at the time. Uh, so that's where I made uh, my very smart postdoc. I actually did the uh, basically this. Uh, so we have, uh, so, so this is how we do graph rotation. So we have a weighted graph, complete graph. We have this load set, edge weight. Now this is basically a form of some space. Then we're gonna do the binary graph operation by one by making one or zero. Then we have this nest structure. So we call this as a graph filtration. Okay? We increase the edge weight. The 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 Dr. Lee's original formulation did it inversely. So she actually did it in the increase decreasing order. But uh, I changed it to increasing order because that's how the brain being people think about the problem. So that's the, this is a very classical figure. <laughs> you might see the similar figure almost everywhere. Why? We are the first group actually that did it. And uh, so many groups are doing it. Uh, we are actually this basic plowing a betty number, betty zero here. Okay. Now you see nice thing about uh, this. This is a monotone. Okay. This is not a coincidence. And the way we actually did it was that we didn't use the extinct packages. Obviously, we are doing a different thing. This is our actually our first attempt in the topological data analysis. We we studied something differently from the what the TDA people did. So we used the Kuskas algorithm and uh, did the minimum span today. I think most people do it because we we have code distributed. And uh, so you might see this. And uh, now, why everyone use this kind of the visualization of the displaying the bet in zero of the filtration value in a graph filtration? Because that give the that immediately give the discrimination. It's a very powerful descriptor itself. And in this case, the, it actually is able to discriminate the two groups actually. Yes. So monotone in the bet in zero is obvious. You don't actually need to prove much. It's a just obvious concept. If you basically trace the, the minimum spine tree. Then what's the difference between the grep and the comp simply the complex? Well, grep will usually handle the pairwise interaction, but it cannot handle the, the high order interaction eh? without doing something more. Eh? The grep represents itself. What I'm talking about. So high order interaction is uh, like this. And uh, if you build the, the triangle in three nodes, that's uh, what they call high order interaction and uh, simple homology. And uh, so graph population only does uh, zero dimensional homology and one dimensional homology. That's it. You may think uh, when I gave when we our group presented this, uh, a lot of the TDA people thought this is a trivial. They want to see the much high dimensional features. But I, I keep telling them that uh, we don't need it. Think about it this way. Almost all the data uh, can be represented with the graph. That's what the computer science is. Com the fundamental data structure in the computer science is a graph. It's not a simple complex. Simple complex is not the fundamental data structure in a computer science. Eh? Then they still do the deep learning, they still do all those complicated things just with the graph data structure. What does it mean? It means that the, we only need up to one dimensional homology to do most of the practical things. I'm sure there are like a 10% or 5% of problem that require high dimensional features, but most people just like uh, me, we will be happy. If you are happy with the team learning on the graph data structure, you should be happy with the just graph data structure and forget about the simple complex. No need in a usual practical application. It's just, uh, to me, it's just two example. And, uh, so this basically explains the differences. I'm gonna skip this. So this is a graph filtration. Now, I have seen this uh, with a number of connected component that's increasing. Number of connected complex increasing. 
by each time I thresholded the edge weight. So what about the cycle? Eh? Number of cycle. Now along the graph filtration, do we have a monotonicity of the battery one? Do we? Yes, we have it. <laughs> That's why it's so nice. So the, if you look at this paper, it's uh, you can see the probe. Probe is very short. I mean, you don't even need a probe actually. This is a, if you read it, you will see that it's a, just a, like a plain game, word game. Just one paragraph, about three sentence proof on the, yeah, looking at the cases where the, what happened in the, when you delete the edges. That's usually graph theory proof actually. Most of graph theory proofs are constructed that way. Uh, so we have this kind of the monotonicity. Okay, we establish this then the, we can do the quantification. So this is a monotone curve. Well, we can do the, the exact topology inference the way we did it using the lattice path. Okay? I, we, in the previous session, we studied the lattice path. We can apply that to do the data quantification here, but we wanna do more. We wanna do more than inference. So I'm going to introduce the bot and that decomposition. This is a, the, I think a, the, uh, this, our group is the only group actually that came up with this decomposition. Actually, we did a extensive literature because this idea seems to be so trivial, but uh, we couldn't find it. So I think that this is uh, our group's contribution to uh, this little area of the topology data analysis, I guess. Uh, so if you do that filtration, we can partition the edge, edges into H1 or H0. H0 is basically edges that actually create the number component. H1 is the edges that actually destroy the cycle. And there's no, it's a disjoint event. You cannot destroy cycle and at the same time create a component that, uh, that will give you the logical fallacy. So this is disjoint event. So you can decompose it. You basically, you can form a partition basically. So now this is a maximum spine tree. And this is a, all other edges, that's a non maximum spine tree. And that's as you wait. Okay. Is it clear? So in a graph, if you're using graph, this is it. This is the most amazing thing. Why this decomposition matters? It will simplify computation, so many computations. And what about the persistence? Well, persistence for the cycle, it's always, we are talking about the, 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 the weighted graph, so it's considered to be born at the minus infinity. So you don't need to worry about the bot time. And what about the, The, the number of component. Well, this is actually, once something is born, it doesn't die. So it's, I mean, that time is infinity. So in this case, you don't need to worry about the, 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 the that time. So my Persian diagram for graph filtration is, <laughs> it's stupidly simple. It's a both set and this death set. That's it. Everything is aligning horizontally or vertically. It will save you a lot of time. So this is example. So actually able to display both as set and that as set in this way, graphic demo visualizer. This completely character all the topology of this changing, eh? dynamic changing brain network. This is everything. You don't need to worry about anything. This is a complete characterization of topology of the graph filtration. So, I'm thinking about analyzing this. Uh, so if you if you have some idea, let me know. I mean, um, with this concept, I'm gonna construct the Wasser standard stuff. So we have a random variable, x and y. Okay. So this is the usual Wasser standard distance, two Wasser standard distance. 
that's a definition. And in PMO is taking over the every possible joint distribution. Obvious joint distribution cannot possibly unique. There can be multiple distribution. However, this sh shadow more like a projection give a constraint. So if you, in some special case, this constraint actually simplify a lot of things and you can compute things exactly. The, the, that case is a Gaussian distribution where you can actually compute the Wasserstein distance exactly. Yeah. But uh, what about the Persian diagram? Well, it's a scatter point. So you're gonna put a scatter point. It's classical argument. You machine it somewhere. So you construct the empirical distribution with the Dirac delta, Dirac delta, and you work out the, the mathematical detail then you can come up with this projection, more like a bijection problem. It's, a, it's what they call assignment problem, in a combinatorics actually. So it, this is widely studied in combinatorics actually. And the, the usual algorithm is the Hungarian algorithm for matching this. I'm sure that there are other algorithms now. Uh, Hungarian algorithm is usually the N cube algorithm. It's very slow. Okay? So we are doing a bijection between scatter point to scatter point. That's what you know. Then I'm gonna apply this to Persian diagram. Our Persian diagram on a graph filtration. Then what do we have it? This is what we have it. Huh? <laughs> so we are only matching sorted data, sorted death values to the sorted death value sorted both value and sorted both value. Huh? How simple the problem can be? Can you formulate the problems any simpler than this? So the, what's the long time? Matching sorted value is just a n cube, n log n algorithm actually. It's a, and also solution is already given. You can actually mathematically prove, uh, I cannot come up with other construction out of proof. So we actually did the, the kind of stupidly doing induction. I mean, induction is a, and the statement is that if you have two graph, eh? the, the Wasserstein, the zero dimension Wasserstein distance, it's actually, you have to scale, the squared Wasserstein distance is basically matching the, the sorted value. Same thing, matching the sorted value. When we did that, we actually, eh? We didn't even know what the sliced Wasserstein distance actually. We don't use bar. We don't issue with the TDA literature. We just do it our own way. So when we did, when we when, I, but then I realized that it's actually what the sliced Wasserstein computation also do use this kind of one-dimensional projection. Yeah, that's what I learned. It. Yeah. So. So that's how we define now. Nice thing about this is that uh, you seen that this uh, sorting, this sorting and uh, matching the sorted value, we are actually matching the edge weights, eh? both values to the both value, eh? that value to uh, that value. That means it's more than a distance. By doing a computing Wasserstein distance, I can do the graph matching automatically without any computation. So it gave you a bijection of the edges between the graph so I called it this Wasserstein graph matching. <laughs> I show you the example. I, I mean, I'm gonna match the maximum spawning tree to the maximum spawning tree in terms of edge weight, smallest edge to the smallest edge weight. Then we're gonna also do the same thing with the, any edges that's not maximum spawning tree. And I claim that's a matching in topology sense. Yeah, that's good matching. We actually demonstrated in a paper that the, this uh, stupid method performs better than state of our graph matching algorithm in computer science. Why? If you look at the graph matching algorithm, none of them actually use topology. They use a geometric cost or the edge weight values. That's not topology. Eh? Why? We are nearly matching the topology to the topology. So unless you come up with a, another topological approach for matching, graph matching, existing graph theory method, I mean, existing uh, geometric method for doing graph matching will like, cannot beat our method. That's, uh, okay. 
So what do you do if the number of the nodes are different? Something like this. Four node network, five node network. So we thought about this one. So longer position. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna do the graph filtration sequentially. Then we're gonna match the longer position to the, the, the another longer position sequentially. And what's remaining, you simply match it like this. Okay? So the same thing, you match the longer position first. Then the remaining match will be simply matched like this. So that's all the problem. So we can do uh, Wasserstein graph mean. Now, there is something called the Wasserstein body center. I mean, it's a same, almost mathematical same concept, but the problem is that the Wasserstein body center, I mean, you can do Wasserstein body center graph if you treat the graph as a way to, uh, as some sort of the distance matrix, I think. Yeah, yeah, in a geometric sense. You can do the Wasserstein body center in a geometric sense not in the topology sense, but we are basically, we are doing Wasserstein body center in a topology space, in a Poisson diagram. Huh? So that's the difference. And uh, also com uh, in compared to Wasserstein body center, we are not doing any optimization on numerical computation. We are simply matching the sorted value to sorted value without any optimization. That's uh, how our group usually do computation, large scale computation, by identifying the mathematical ingredient to make things compute quicker. Okay. So now the problem is that it's not unique. <laughs> I, I, I have actual mathematical proof. So I'm gonna just show the, this as a demonstration or the visual proof that the uh, Wasserstein graph mean is not unique. That means that uh, if you have a two graph filtration, you can obtain the identical graph filtration with a different uh, graph actually. So that means you, you cannot have uh, the same Wasserstein graph mean, you can have a different mean. But if that doesn't mean, doesn't matter, you're gonna have an exactly identical topology. It's like a, if you have two graph that has a different shape, these two graph can have a identical topology. That's common understanding of topology. So it's the same thing. So everything clicks, nothing is illogical. So we did a simulation study. So graph with two modules, graph with three modules. Code is there, you seen it. So we generated 10 graph, 10 graph, and from some distance, it's a water standard, scared water standard actually, between the groups and the within groups and form the statistics. By the way, these distance are correlated. If you, ever, if you add these two distance, it's constant. You can actually prove mathematically. Uh, the paper didn't do it, but uh, that should be obvious. I mean, you have to think about it. It's obvious in a, in a chemist clustering sense, it's obvious with the Euclidean distance, but it may not be so obvious with the Wasserstein distance on a graph filtration. So you have to prove it, we didn't do it. So if you do it, that will be give you paper. <laughs> so we do the inference based on a permutation test and we generate, I think, uh, in a tutorial example, we, demonstrated with the half a million permutation, you know, like this, eh? like, uh, eh? it's not one second, half a million permutation in one second, even with a eh? very slow method code. So it's a long time comparison. So this is a plot, our method is plot, because it's, in terms of it's, uh, uh, this is, the scale is a logarithmic scale. So that's why it's a plot, while other methods is like, uh, looks like, very slow. Now, if you apply the permutation test on a exchange method, you cannot learn it. Okay? Suppose that uh, if you take a 10 second to permute it and compute all the distance, 10 second times uh, half a million will give you a few days. Are you willing to do the uh, P computer, P value computation for a few days? No, use this method it will compute it in one minute, one second. Okay. So 
This is a Bayesian algorithm. It's a Bayesian transposition test. We are trying to package it. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the idea was that uh, you look at the, how much change in the actual test statistic. You don't compute the, the test statistic over permutation. You only look at the, how much little changes the delta value changes in a single transposition. This is a little permutation and look at it and compound it and compute it. So it's a, what we call online test. Uh, our group is big on online computation and online learning because that's the way you handle large scale data online. Eh? That's a keyword if you're not doing it. And uh, graph filtration is very scalable for online computation. So this is performance analysis. A smaller number is better. So it's, uh, we are essentially building every possible graph matching algorithm. So you see the two clusters here. And this is three classes. So if you use this code, you can do the very nice uh, clustering method. And then, the, so we have this. Now we're gonna do the bot and that decomposition and compute the distance. Code is so simple. It's what they call bot that decomposition. I'm gonna explain it. This is it. This is actually needed for the, that's like a 10 nice code. Eh? I'm sure you can translate this into your Python in the 10 minutes. Eh? I don't think it takes that long. Now this is using the Wasserstein distance computation. This code can be written much simpler and I think about the 15 lines of code. I think he, the reason it takes uh, longer is that we, he implemented the, the possibility of the unequal number of the dot, the data and both parts through the data argumentation. This code can be simple, but it doesn't have to be this complex. So I would say it's about uh, 15 lines of code. Eh? So all the code is like a 15 lines, 10 lines. That's the only thing you needed to do anything so that's why I, I, so I'm gonna do the actual the data analysis, topological inference on the Wasserstein distance. So based on, I have a, this kind of the network. I generate four networks with the two modules. I generate the six network with three modules and I compute the distance, pairwise distance. As you can see, you, you see the closing pattern. That means this distance works. So these two here coming from here, and this three by three matrix coming from here. It's a basically distance matrix here that we're seeing. So how we actually test it? How we actually test it, they are different. Number of nodes are different. See, size of matrix is different. Well, through the, the Wasserstein distance. So we're gonna form some sort of statistics and we're gonna do the permutation. Now I use a, half a million permutation. Now it's, uh, the, you, you don't wanna do this uh, with the permutation test, half a million. If you do a brute force approach, it will take you a few days. How best our algorithm is? No, <laughs> that best. <laughs> so you can do this. Eh? I'm not joking. Why it's so best? It's called online computation. We use we we use the op, we compute the property by updating previous estimation of property, so we don't have to go through. It. If you look at the permutation, doing a red picking a random permutation is a random mode exactly. You are taking a random mode on a space of permutation group, eh? so you can actually do the trans. It's called the transposition, and the sequence of transposition will form a full permutation. You can prove it. If you if you read the hunger pod algebra textbook, one theorem there is a proof showing that the sequence of transposition will give you a full permutation. So that's how we're actually using that idea to come up with a p-value computation, extremely best. Uh, I'm gonna end my tutorial and uh, this is our mass campus. It's fairly big. The city itself is kind of big campus. 
So if you uh, 